a head-to-head -head series. I show you two patients with two different diseases that look alike radiologically. And you see if you can figure out what the diagnoses are. Today's topic is sinonasal mass. Here's patient number one. This is a coronal CT. And you can see that the left maxillary sinus is completely filled and something is spilling out into the nasal cavity. Here's an axial image on patient number one, where you can see the effect that the mass is having on the medial maxillary sinus wall. I do have an MRI in this patient, and you can see the mass both within the sinus and within the nasal cavity. Now here is patient number two. Again, we have a mass filling the maxillary sinus and finding its way out into the nasal cavity. Here's the axial image on this patient. And you can see that the relationship the mass has to the medial wall of the maxillary sinus. In this patient, I don't have an MRI, but I do have a soft tissue window that shows the mass and its extent. Now would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can figure out what the two different diagnoses are in these two patients. This is the key image for patient number one. This type of enhancement that we're seeing within the mass is called cerebriform enhancement, and it's associated with a very particular entity, inverted papilloma. This mass arises in the lateral wall of the nasal cavity or the medial wall of the maxillary sinus, whichever you want to call this bone. It extends both into the sinus and into the nasal cavity. This mass will sometimes have characteristic calcifications, but not always. Uh, importantly, inverted papillomas may de-differentiate into squamous cell carcinoma, so it's important that they be removed. This is the key image for patient number two. You can see that the mass arose in the sinus, also known as the maxillary antrum, and flows out into the nasal cavity, then back across the coena, this gap here, and into the nasopharynx. As you've probably surmised, this is an antrochoanal polyp. It's an inflammatory polyp, but when they arise in the antrum, extend through the nasal cavity, and then across the coena, we call them antrochoanal polyps. So if those were the key images, why did I have you look at these images when you were deciding? It's because there's another important clue here. The inverted papilloma is erosive. The edge of the bone here is sharp. It doesn't remodel, it just erodes and abruptly stops. However, the polyp is a benign entity and it remodels the wall of the maxillary sinus. See how it's bowed out and just thinned into non-existence centrally there. This concept of erosion versus remodeling is super important throughout head and neck radiology, so it was worth pointing out in this particular case. But back to the key images. This is the cerebriform enhancement of an inverted papilloma, and this is the flowing extent of an antrochoanal polyp. They're in the same location. They have the same basic shape but they're very different lesions.